Montana first met the number five receiver on our MT Top 40 before he stepped foot in high school. It was back in 2011. He and his buddies were taking the Little League World Series by storm. And we've met some active players so far on our MT Top 40 countdown of the best football players in Montana history, but he's the only one that has yet to play a down in college. That starts this fall with the Montana Grizzlies. Number five, looking at the receivers, is Billing Seniors, Gabe Salser. You know, I can only think of one other guy, and that's Matt Miller, you know, and uh, to me, those two are the top two, in my opinion, that I've seen in high school football as far as playmakers. So, um, you know, he, he is a special kid, and I think the only thing you can say is, is you look at the amount of big plays he's had in his four years, and those big plays, I mean, those win games, so that's what breaks games open. It was 2011 when Salser and the Big Sky All-Stars out of Billings went all the way to the Little League World Championship game, but he bust onto the football scene as a freshman at Billings Senior back in 2014. Very first game, it was two passes, 63 yards, and a 59-yard fourth quarter touchdown as the Bronx got past Butte 30 to 27, something his father coach remembers well. I remember the first time he got in, he played, he had actually played in the sophomore game that day. They played Butte and they, they had a three o'clock game and then our seven o'clock game was the, the varsity game and one of the receivers got hurt and uh, he went in and played the second half or towards the end of the first half and the whole, entire second half um, as a receiver and then he caught a ball that kind of won the game for us. I mean, obviously there was more to it than just the one play, but that was the score that um, it was a tight game and that ended up uh, being the difference in the game, I guess, at that time. And I, I think, you know, he's not, not every kid gets to grow up on the sideline. I mean, some kids, um, they start out and um, they, they go through the process of spending some time maybe with their friends as a ball boy or whatever. But I mean, Gabe was catching PATs and being a ball boy since he was old enough. We always said you had to be 12 years old for safety reasons. Well, I think he started when he was five and we just couldn't keep him out of there. But so he was super comfortable in that setting, but he always was humble. I mean, he, he really does not um, want to put out there that he's any more special or different than anybody else. He just wants to be a regular kid. Um, but when, you know, when the lights go on or whatever, he does have a, he plays with a little bit of a edge and, um, you know, it, it's all, all bets are off once, once the, the game starts, I guess. You just can't put a hand on him. And the thing was, is he got so much stronger from his sophomore year to his junior and senior year. You know, his junior year, sophomore year, he felt like if you could put a hand on him, you could probably get into the ground. His junior and senior year, it didn't matter. You, you, you had to gang tackle him. You had to have three guys on him because he was strong enough where if you just tried to arm tackle him, he'd run through you. You know, and then obviously once he broke the first tackle, it was lights out because I don't know if I've ever seen a faster, just that flat, fast human being and play football in Montana. Just unbelievable. It was a 6-5 2014 season, but it ended in the playoffs, and that sparked something special at Billings Senior. The Bronx would play the next three state AA championship games. They lost to Bozeman in 2015 and they got your back-to-back -back championships, undefeated seasons in 2016, 2017, and Gabe Sulser was at the center of it all. 261 catches, 4,007 yards, and 50 touchdowns. Every one of those believed to be a Montana 11-man football record. He played 50 games. We, we counted that there was 50 high school, varsity football games that he played in. And I, I would say, even though he kind of went through some of that, those you know, when you play both ways and for all those years, you're even, and you're not, even though you're not inside and playing between the tackles where all the bumps and bruises take place, I mean, there's some things you have to overcome. And I think, um, you know, I, I guess the first thing, that, the thing that comes to mind is before we played CMR his junior year, uh, we were having a lighter practice on Thursday and he felt like he sprained his ankle. Um, and this was like game six. So we still had the four more regular season games and three playoff games. And he was really concerned about it. and I'm like, well, can you go? And I talked to Coach Murdoch and the trainers and treated it like it was a sprained ankle. So we played that game and then the rest of the season and then in through the state championship game. And um, after further review, he found out that he had a broken bone in his foot that he, that he had played with. And I don't know if that's the evolution, but I mean, he has made big strength, strength gains and size gains since he was a freshman. But I think he, he learned to sort of play with injury and um, compartmentalize some of that stuff and still be effective. And so I think that's one of the things that, you know, if you do get banged up, 
you have an ability to continue and, and uh, use your survival skills to still be a, a you know, contributor to the team. Gabe Sulser would also add 30 touchdowns on the ground and return game. He was a four-time All-State player and three times first-team recognition. During his sophomore, junior, and senior seasons, Senior went 37-2 and, and once again back-to-back -back undefeated records, 13-0 in each 2016 and 2017. Beyond special because I know how hard it is to even get close to that. You know, we had some years when I was a head coach where we got close and, you know, lost in title games where we weren't undefeated, but we had some really good years. But to um, I, you don't take it for granted. Um, but as you remind yourself to enjoy the ride as the season goes on, um, and, you, you know, you're just subtly amazed every time you win a game and you know you're just one after another and who's going to step up tonight and who's going to make the big play and um, to have your son be a big part of it um, although he's pretty blessed I mean we had some he's had some great teammates um, the last few years but for him to be a part of that um, it, it uh, I, you really can't put words to it and I think what's going to happen is down the road as we look back on this we're going to think wow that was a pretty special deal. Sulcer seems to be the perfect fit for today's offense, but opposing coaches could see him starring even if it meant having to switch positions. I would say yes and no. I think Gabe's going to be a tailback, you know, the way the offenses were before, and he'd probably been a kid that's a Gatorade player of the year at tailback. I mean, I don't know how many rushing yards he had this year. It was pretty close to 1,000. I could see teams run toss sweep with him and still have a nobody be able to tackle him. So, yes, he's perfect because I think he got to stretch the field more and do, and do some of that stuff. The screen game's a lot different than it was before. But as far as running the football and just being a force on the field, I don't think that would have changed. I think he'd still be doing be as dominant now as he even he was then. Gabe Sulso, your Class AA Offensive MVP and Montana Gatorade Player of the Year after the 2017 season. That saw 85 catches, 1,109 yards, and 11 touchdowns. He also added 997 rushing yards and 16 scores on 106 carries. Five foot nine receiver will continue his career this fall at the University of Montana. Clearly, uh, one on one is not the best situation for everybody, but for that you know that five nine hundred and seventy pound um, receiver that has you know forward back and forth speed and then side to side is it's pretty valuable position really. Gabe Sulser likely to climb this list of the MT top 40 if we were to look at it after his Montana Grizzly and perhaps beyond career. That's just getting it started as we roll all the way down to the number one receiver in Montana history over the next few days. Richie Melby, MTN Sports.